our regular season, we started out pretty slow. I think we were like two and five at one point, and um, it was looking pretty grim. But we uh, we all talked together as a team, like really focused on what our issues were, and um, we brought it back. Fox executing the rest of TSM Academy Ace. Yeah. DG, ladies and gentlemen. Fox wow. win on the day. TSM Academy 3. Oh, man. GG's. The loud clutch oh, no, with no, their no. Oh, my God. Cody just gonna disappeared. Be Five wins in a row for Fox Academy as you take down the remaining members of Clutch Gaming and secure the win on the rift. Let's go, guys. Fox win in the chat, guys. Yeah. GG. And it's going to be one of the most important ones because Fox is looking to take the base of Lawrence C9 Academy. Oh Lawrence God. going oh in, my flashing God, in. Oh, my so God. Ladies and gentlemen, we just witnessed an absolute murder of Where Cloud9 they? Academy. GG in the chat. Fox Academy taking the win. Let's go. I haven't been on stage in two years either. Same. You good? Same. Same. I remember I played the first time. Like, we probably didn't know a couple of Really? I was like, just true. I would like try to see us minions and I didn't ache like at the time. I was just walking. I was playing as Wild Turtle. I'd try to see us a minion. I just walk into the wave and die. Holy fuck. I'll try it. Nice. That's what our game one is going to look like. Except it's the end of the game. Cool. Win. Win 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 Who drew that? Fuck everything else, just Rins. win. Rins win. Rins win. Rins Rins we're playing five B O ones. We're just playing a scrim. We are playing we're three B O ones. We're gonna we're gonna win three B O ones in a row. Isn't that insane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any weird? Oh, really? <laughs> On some weird ass stage. Nope. We're All right, time in chat. Mabry looking huge. <laughs> Next. Oh shit! Chat yeah. rolls. Mabry oh, looking huge. We are As usual. Hello and welcome to the Academy Midseason Invitational where the best North American Academy teams from all across the greater Los Angeles era converge for an uh, area for a converge for a clash that ultimately ends with one champion. So going to the first game versus 100 Thieves. In that week of scrims we practiced a ton of kill. It was like a new champion and Sam thought it was super broken. So but we were just like really confident like we want to set up kill in 4 or 5. Um, if we can bust that up. People don't know what the new Kale does. Like Riv was saying, she is focused on scaling. Her passive uh, will level up at different levels. Start at level one, then at level six levels up, at level 11, and once again at level 16, you will be getting power spikes from her passive. Uh, and then she's mostly kind of focused at being an auto attacker, not yeah. super different from old Kale in that flash. Force top lane without actually getting a kill. In the meantime, bot lane. There's one, Charm goes out, nice job taking down Prismo as he comes back with big damage. They bite back down on the bot lane. Whoa. Hero's entrance comes in, but Yusui's just trying to get himself out of this turret range, and now he will be on that aggro. No more minions for now as Fox has to back up, but it's illegal, almost goes down. He wants to get into the fight, but he actually wants, ow, the Realm Warp's not gonna be quick enough. And Stunt cannot save anyone around him as they just keep falling. Unfortunate, but Fox, Striking hard and well. Uh, which does stop us from dying as he's doing top out here. Ooh, you got ultimate too. Who's he gonna grab? Is there an impale to an impale? Oh, how's it feel? Same medicine. The damage coming in uh -oh. from Yasui. He gets one kill, but I don't think he's got it for Soli Go. A little bit too much safety there for the rise. Shield for shield. And there's the end. Yasui getting the heal. One more E in and he can get it. 40% there. The shot from the cannon minion. Soli Go keeps himself alive with that last auto and spell. Their men knowing that we need to force this Baron to get the TP out of the rise, where we'll see if 100 Thieves want to commit to the split or if they want to take this fight. Holy moly, their damage is he sufficient. TP the minions in. He TP the minions in. One of those minions, the super minions on the side, can take down a Nexus turret if it has full focus. The fight now going down at Baron. It looks like they're going to lose their support right away again. Phil's going to stay alive with the ultimate from Lord Lowe's Kale. They're now get the, getting the fight back into the mid lane, and I believe they're going to be able to drop Zaligo 
as they continue the fight. They will now be on to Fragus. He goes down. Oh, so Lee goes down to the bottom side of the map. I apologize. That was Fragus and Stunt that have gone down. 12 to 11 now, 36 minutes in, and Echo Fox pulled that right play card out. I think mainly the reason I got super hyped is I picked Kale, knowing it was like I had three weeks to practice, three days to practice that champion, and I'm like, it's really new. It's either going to go decent or really awful. He's able to make it out this time as he gets taunted, but he's still safe. They drop stunt right away. The tank is gone. Fragus has to run. And wow, Echo Fox has struck hard. And they struck fast. They come back with a shock and all fight right inside the base of 100 Ds. They're able to take down an inhibitor immediately. Lorlo on fire with the rest of the team. A triple kill for Lorlo as he just knocks down Fake God immediately. <laughs> Teleported in. Very nicely done. I like it. I like the style play coming in from Yasui's rise all there on the realm warp to the turret. They're going to be able to take down the first Nexus. Fragus, Soligo watching as they're figuring out what can they do in game two to stop what just happened in game one. Echo Fox come away with that victory. A very back and forth game one. Both teams had their opportunities to potentially win this game. Some good last minute decision making out of Echo Fox allows yep. their late game comp to kind of finally get the advantages they need to smash the ending of this game. I think the first game was like huge momentum for our team because uh, we we get really hyped when we win and everyone's feeling good, especially Sam who was able to play the KL that he was practicing all week and um, yeah, the game wasn't clean but <laughs> we won. So. We also get into another situation like they, where they two men Baron. Just make sure we're talking about. Oh yeah, we don't see people on the map. Right? Yeah, yeah. If we don't see a rise on the map, we know yeah. he can two man it with us. Yeah, yeah. David, do you want five pick this game by then? Uh, well, depends. We don't decide yet. Is is oh, our Silas yeah. probably really? Oh, they nice. get to select. They get to select. Still, our Silas is proud. Yeah, I think Silas look good. No, yeah, Silas is OP. I just like. I, I, was, I, was, I feel like our early game should have been uh -huh. way more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's because we died on bot, so I never yeah, got a blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rise gets right. blue, he and he he just gets to push me in on. Yeah, like so we were really confident going into game two after our first trick, our first win. And again, we, we like all the champions we wanted and thought we were in a really good position to win the game, but Fragus played Kindred and James was punishing him really well. And it was like, at first, like the first few skirmishes around bot lane, we ended up just misplaying and losing the game in like 25 minutes. Still not targetable by the W that shows up when uses summer spell as Fragus caught out of position a little bit here. He has a teammate to help, though. It's going to be a 3v2 real fast. Yasui nice disrupt the wall. Work. No mana for Yasui. This is going to be an auto-attack fight for him. Lost finally able to leave lane as there was just too many. A flash over the wall as he uses nice. the W Summoner. That was real Summoner to get out. He stays alive. No kill on the field just yet, but they have dropped Fragus. They're looking for it on to Panda, but he stays alive. He's got some thick fur. Phil goes down as he tries to make it out of the fight. Soli goes somehow still standing tall as he swings the comma around right above his head. Yasui lost about 400 combined HP. Channeling just to the right. Panda is watching his team go down as they lose Lost. Oh, the ultimate and the quickness is on as well. Prismo stays alive somehow, and so does Stun. They're able to get a great retaliation on this, and the counter is going to be bad for Echo Fox. They start getting their full per pulled out left and right, and Phil is going to go down to fill the pockets of 100 Thieves Woo. with a bit more gold. Six to two now, just 11 and a half. Let's wait for the next minion wave here. They just have to be careful they don't get themselves into a sticky situation. This uh, is waiting for the hop. Oh, he missed the hop over the wall. No, he calls in Stun. This could be a real bad situation. Echo Fox are in their base, but can they even hold it? The house is on fire. The roof's fall through. Yasui trying to get out the backside. Here's the inhibitor turret starting to go down. The world is ending for Lorlo, but it looks like he'll be able to stay just on the edge. It's big enough for all six of them there inside the base. And now they're going to be on to that last inhibitor turret if the mini wave won't just bring them to the Nexus. Slowly as the series went on, I feel like we're all super confident and like we made like a joke going into the game is like even when we're losing, we're going to make them sweat. So every time we were losing, we just all in our comms were like, all right guys, we're like down 6k, we're just going to make them sweat the whole game, make them like work for the win and like kind of like SKT did when they won like the Worlds one. They never just fell over and lost the game, right? So even when we were losing, we made them, we wanted to make them feel the pressure of having to actually beat us and close us out to just get in that mindset for every single game and I think that made our like, confidence and mindset really good for each game. And it was something we like picked up on like really recently too, like a day or two before. It's like, we want that mindset going into these best of fives. And I think it was a really positive thing. Roaming in numbers. 
Mighty sense for Fragus, but he may go against it. He gets hit up, charmed up, knocked down, first blood in an instant. Uh, but yeah, nice pickoff again in the top side. A lot of patience, five hand to sit in that brush until the pressure was gone in the top. You're right, 20 minutes does have that. So tier stacked up. Glacial Fisher to the left, slicing Maelstrom to the right, and the true shot barrage. We're feeling the breeze over here as it whips over the head. Uh -oh. They still come up with the kill. They knew what they were doing. They have the ults to use. Oh, Hemo Plague and the ultimate coming in for our Loro's ultimate with the bell coming in. Lamp Spike goes down. We're going to see if he can make it out alive. Loro standing tall with the team as they go in hard. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Surprising fights all over as well. 43 minutes in, they are quickly on to Fragus. Keeps himself alive. Nice redemption coming down to keep the fight as well. Going a little bit healthier here on the side of 100 Thieves. And there comes through a kill on to Panda. In goes Yasui, and he just slices down the members. That's Fragus falling, and we have now spawning on the left side a triple kill. Oh for Yasui, and that is gonna be 100 Thieves trying to get back onto the map. Falling super fast on both sides as both are down. The Nexus wide open, and Echo Fox take game three to bring us to game point. Thank you for meeting me here for game four. And you, you're still here. I I'm here. Echo Fox is one game away from taking the series. 100 Thieves have them back against the wall. Multiple options once that time comes. A good taunt to not have to go too far with Prismal here. He gets the heal down immediately. He's pretty healthy. Killer Instinct outside the fight to get away from most of the damage. That is the nice storm to rain on the parade of 100 Thieves, but Lost is going to be lost in that fight. Phil's now the one going down. Phil's playing the cat and mouse game over here. Tries to get a good ultimate and actually gets himself the grand entrance back to the back of the fight. In comes Stun. That's going to knock up one. Panda's in a bad spot, but the damage able to be delivered by Lorlo here from the outside of the fight. They're shredding down 100 Thieves. A double kill for him. Killer Instinct isn't going to be enough. And he may just have killed himself getting into the fight. Eight Gods on the base. God's doing huge damage, though, off the ball right now. Top side of the map, inside the base of Echo Fox. He is shredding down Nexus turrets. The last one will fall. And the Nexus is open on the side of Echo Fox. That's going to be the Nexus turret going down. 100 Thieves keep the game alive. They keep the series alive. And we're headed to game five. Building up to game five, it was just back and forth. Everyone was winning on blue, we were losing on red. Um, there wasn't any like clear issues we were having in the game, it was just some games we had played better than others, and it, it was like, a very back and forth series. We were blue on game five, and we really decided like we want to be playing Galio, we want to deny it from them. So we, I, yeah, we ended up first picking Galio. Lawrence wanted to play Jinx, and in, in the 4 5 in draft, they showed Vladimir and LeBlanc, and those two champions are, well, uh, Kassadin is really good into those two champions, and David's always been like a big fan of Kassadin in the right situations, and as soon as we saw those champs, me and David were like, wait, we should just play Kassadin here. It's gonna be 100 Thieves versus Echo Fox in our final match of the series. Uh, there is a moment in the game when we took a fight around Dragon, and I got two kills, and then I was 4-0 and on Kassadin. I was just like, this game's over. I, I, I knew I could 100% carry the game at that point. He's feeling a little bit of a spike here. He also has a stopwatch to go into stasis. He's gonna use that stopwatch possibly. They did not know a third was here, and they may have not wanted to take this fight. He gets the stopwatch down. Phil's gonna look for this. Winds of War on to Prismal. Stays alive, and he's got Saligo for help on the top side. Fragus now, it's one, Dewey. two shots. Sui, no loot, getting excited rather. A few shots out of Prismal. One more, he can't get it. The staff just missing to the left side. There's the speed up. The kill coming in from Yasui as well as they finish Prismal down. And the chase from Echo Fox is insane. Look how it's going right now. Saligo, gotta be careful. That's the game on fire. Oof, ouch. Goes down there, another kill for Yasui. Eight, one, and two as he starts to build up. The Zanyas, the Saras is almost there with a Rod of Ages fully stacked. Raptor share, share the attendees. Yeah, this oh. is not looking great. Man, you don't want your support, the tankiest guy really, not tankiest, but one of the healthier ones taking that much damage. Lorlo goes into the backside uh -oh. for the throw on the World Ender, try to wreak havoc among three members of 100 Thieves. Glacial Fisher coming out a little early, but they're still gonna be able to drop down Lorlo. And now Echo Fox has to reconsider this fight as Soligo looking good from the right. That's a big shot coming in from Lost. They gotta watch his crits on the Infinity Edge. Here comes Panda, I'm sorry, here comes Phil to save Panda. Thought Panda was going down for a moment as Soligo throws the chain in, but it's not gonna be enough. 
to grab the kill. Yasui on a solo mission. He oh. goes in. There's one kill. The second one is he turns around for the Haymaker. And a third is they're just falling at his feet. Oh. My word. <laughs> That kind of stuff can't happen late game. Stun actually thought something might have happened in the situation. Gets himself caught up in the frying pan for a moment. Fake got coming from the less Crimson Rush. Just wears off, so it's not going to be that big of an attack coming from the Transfusion. But Hemo Plague is on. But there goes 100 Thieves Health Bars. Nuked down immediately by Echo Fox. The base is open. And Echo Fox looks like they're going to be moving on. They see that Academy MSI Championship in their eyes. And they will have a chance moving on, taking down 100 Thieves Academy in the quarterfinals. Echo Fox is your winner. Uh, I mean, I definitely had a good game five. Uh, I think I played to the win condition really well. I got ahead as Cassidy in, in the LeBlanc matchup, which basically guarantees a one game, which is why it's like a pretty decent counter pick. Um, situational, and it just happened to be really good that game. Uh, I think being named MVP was a bit of highway robbery from my boy Samson Lorlo, because uh, he played really well the whole series, and I was more inconsistent. So yeah, yeah like the start of this year, um, our old academy coach Peter moved to TSM, and I heard that Echo Fox needed a new academy coach. So when I found out that Echo Fox needed a new head coach for academy, I thought if I would be able to fit that role. And I was kind of nervous at first because like, I've never been in like that much of a leadership role or been in charge of like running a team or anything like that. But I knew a lot of the players personally. I played with them the year before and um, work like being coached under Peter the year before. I, I feel like I had a decent grasp of the game and I, I learned a lot and I. I, I was kind of nervous at first, but I was also confident that I would be more suitable for, suitable for the job than anyone else they would pick up. So I reached out to James and Justin and asked if they would be willing to uh, try me out for the role, and here I am. I've, I was on a team with Lawrence and David last year. I've known David for like five years playing with them, and I mean, all the players, like especially in esports, like we're like all the same age, so it's kind of weird. Okay, so like in traditional sports, like your coach is like 40, 50 years old, he's like a father figure or something, but I don't think it's really like that in esports. I try to like be more closer to the players because like even before coaching, like I've played league for like seven years and so have these guys, like I've known them for so long, like even if we didn't have personal relationships. So I, I kind of naturally just feel closer to the players, I guess, than in traditional sports and to run, like I would never want to coach a team where it's just like, I'm in charge, like you guys have to listen to listen to what I do, or what I say, or like my way's right, because it's like, in like draft and review, I try to get everyone's opinion on everything. Like, it, it really is a team effort, starting from like, pick and ban, or how we want to play the game. Because uh, like, League is not like, a black and white game, and it's not like, there's not like a right or way, right or wrong play to make it all the time. It's more like, what, what your team as a whole feels like the right thing to do. Sharpen because we are back in Academy for today. The players are live and in studio for the first match of the semifinals as they play for that Academy title of champions. I am Ruby Kabiz in the third, joined by the best KDA cover dancer on this platform specifically. It's Mark Zimmerman. The TSM series is really important to me, David, and uh, more especially because Peter is coaching that team now and we really want to be like our old coach and show him what we learned, I guess, I don't know. I think it'll be really, like, it'll be really fun for me to like be able to be on stage versing Peter and shaking his hand. I think that'll be really cool. TSM definitely was more of a, like, mixed bag of feelings because I felt like we we're matched up well against them, but at the same time not because their coach used to be the coach of Xbox, Echo Fox Academy, so he knows how our players like think, how they like to play, because he taught them, and he taught me too at Scouting Grounds, so he basically knows like our team play style. And yeah. A little bit harder, we're back to the Inferno. That's gonna be Panda getting the smite down. He's very low, but still wants to get into the fight as he throws down the darkness. He will fall to the hands of Craig, and they'll be able to take down Phil as well as they fill their pockets with gold, too, for TSM Academy. It's their minds get more ults off quickly because they've all been successful. Oh, they want to pop that GA right away. 
Yeah, do good. not get it. A little he, too safe there. Could be going back in, nicely denying the vision. Everybody taunted on the side of TSM. And it looks like they'll be able to turn around right after that fight. It wasn't going to be enough from Phil. He goes down first. Pandas next as he was already low and had to give his life for the fight. They're looking at Lorlo and Lost on the top side. Yasui just gets himself out before he gets locked down by Griggs E. And now it is just Echo Fox running for the hills and Angel to come up. Throws down. Ooh, they get the TP in as they throw up Paranoia. They're not waiting at all. I'm eating Crow. But Panda's going to be eating dirt as he goes down immediately. Lorlo almost getting locked down. He does get the stun up. Damage on to Phil as TSM is just able to find them in the middle. They continue to dogpile each member of Echo Fox. That's going to be the kill. The triple over onto Lost. And huge for a Blaze Olive coming up in the last fight. Looking for the Quadra. Lorlo's goes into the Zanya, but gold only looks good for so long as Brandini picks up the last kill. Our Nexus is open, and game one will go to TSM Academy. Gear, welcome back for game two of Echo Fox Academy versus TSM Academy. Drake with bot side as well. Lost has been doing a good job of keeping that in. Not a lot of mana for Yasui. They actually want to take this fight. Good pressure from Phil. The lockdown and the ignite on the treats right away. Into the fight comes Tactical. He can deliver a lot of damage from the outside, but he's not even firing in right now. Hail of Arrows over the top is able to help secure a kill for a Blaze Olive, and now they get taken out by the Dragon. Room kick lost on Misfortune. Decides to stay in there. These fights are going to be close. That could have hurt here for Lorlo. He's going to have just about 400. Whoa! He left! Fear from beyond, or I should say death. And he goes down, nice job onto Lorlo. He did not expect those chains to come through and a double kill coming in for Grig. Amazing job from the backside of that fight. Interesting approach. Now Grig's in trouble again. They're still in the chase game here. Stop the backs against TSM, but can they pressure the waves outside of the base? Echo Fox may just be buying more time for those minion waves of TSM to build up and crash back in. Possible kill on the Yosui. The shield comes up. Brandini gets the stasis. Ooh, the Petrifying Gaze just misses, but it gives enough to the slow panda. A few more fangs, and the chase is for naught. So Sheen hits on to the Nexus as Brandini had a fantastic Lane on the top side, weathering the storm of Echo Fox, and he comes through to take down the Nexus for game two with the team. That's what I'm saying, but pre six. Uh, we, we know we can win through top, so I think if we ban Jace and we play around top, it doesn't really matter if we have to. Yeah, give a little jungle push or top. Yeah. And post six, I, I don't even think it's that hard. Too. Like, if we're far enough, if we're like ahead in our lanes, then we can just bait the terry call. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. it's not it's not like unkillable bot lane. I think I think we're on red and we just ban Jace and give Snap kind of pick top and play through top. Like I don't think Sun of Terek is gonna yeah, like the reason why they're not picking it early is because if we have a Ganking jungler in mid trial or like contest mid trial, then we can just dive him on repeat. Right? So that's that's literally, what, C, that's that's literally what C9 does. Unless what? unless unless you guys want to play the, like the Sandra or something. I mean, we get, we leave up Silas. No, he can too. he can still play his champions. I just have to be like maybe we leave up Silas. You sure? No, but if they put Silas top, that's hard. Really I yeah. think you'd rather leave up. We're not gonna we just yeah. leave up Turk the floor, but we have to. I well, yeah, I think so risk, too. Right? I think so. Too. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you think? No, I mean not. <laughs> it's it, it, it's it's doomed it's a little bit. And if they if they going on to the academy playoff stage, I was super comfortable, in part like due to like my time playing LCS, because even though like we lost those LCS games, like. I still got like really valuable experiences in like keeping my cool, like make sure I'm confident, playing my own game. Uh, so when I got to the academy stage, I was just like, oh, like I just put my setup like this, you know, like all the all little things. And we see 30 seconds before TSM head into that possible match point game, or does Echo Fox Academy keep themselves alive here in this semifinal series? It is a best of five. And TSM Academy has run through the first two games. A different composition here coming for game three. Feeling pretty safe on a few of the champions that they've been playing in that Urgot, in that Cassiopeia. Everything else is gonna get the switch up here as they hop into game three against Echo Fox. Boy, oh boy. We'll be diving with this composition, and you are correct. Three and a half minutes in, already showing behind the turret and rig. He has great timing on this. Ooh, they go for the dive in. Flash of Treats, Cocoon on to Phil as well, and again. Oh. Phil becomes one of the first to go down. Panda gets the ultimate in from Lorlo. A little bit of damage over onto the team of sure, TSM Treats. Oh, Whoa. Fear Beyond Death takes down Panda. The fight is in, and this could be it. TSM want to get to that Academy Finals, and they will be able to drop most members of Echo Fox. The last member to run for the Fountain is Yasui. 
And with the Nexus turrets to fall, a three-game victory here in the semifinals for TSM as they are looking good. And I don't know if any team can even figure them out through the strategies they used in this semifinal best of five. The Nexus goes down, and TSM is heading to finals. We, we, we tried to accelerate the early game too fast, and then it was just too sped up. It was, it was too sped up to the point where we were just like skipping steps. So like we we get like the vision, and then instead of like pushing them out of dragon or whatever, like we just start to dragon in their faces, and it just be like, oh, we're coin flipping the game already. <laughs> Five minutes. So or I guess that was that was like the biggest benefactor to like why we lost that series. with you guys and for my first time coaching I, I learned a lot from you guys and I hope we all had a good season. And I mean from starting out two and five, making yeah, yeah, yeah. running it back and then making playoffs and getting top four, it was still a good it was still a good season. Yeah. I, I hope no one's like too upset because I think we did a really good job coming back to the team. This split. So agreed. We also had a really good series last week. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So it's part of the joys of being the first team to play a series on a new patch. So to make playoffs, I think it means a lot to our players. Like, uh, Lorlo has been recently on Golden Guardians. They were losing all of last year, so I'm sure it feels great for him to win. Uh, Yasui and Lost, last split in the Academy, I think their record together was like three and 10 or something. Like they weren't doing that great. Like uh, Panda's completely new. I mean, Andrew's the only one that came from like a winning team last year. So the fact that we're able to all come together and be successful this year, uh, I think it means a lot for all the players. And it means a lot for me as well, like my first split ever coaching, being able to make playoffs is a huge accomplishment for myself, so. Considering how we started this season off, which was two and five, pretty good result. <laughs> pretty good result when you look at it from that kind of perspective. But um, I wouldn't say I'm very happy with the result. Coming second also doesn't feel great, but obviously we all want to aspire to win Academy in terms of our team and anything that wasn't first would be pretty disappointing for us. So it was a pretty disappointing split, but looking at it from the outside perspective or you know just the overall picture, it wasn't so bad. Because who knows, maybe we could have come fifth or even lost. So yeah, we worked hard and we made it to third, fourth, so not too unhappy about it, but I wouldn't say I'm like fully content with that kind of result because I want to reach for higher. What's up, camera? How you doing, bro?